What's up guys, Mason the Brock Anderson here and this is Arrow Season 4 Episode 18, 1159. I don't believe it. Not just because this show has killed people before. They made it look very suspicious. Very suspicious. Anyway, before I get to that final scene, um, the episode in general, very interestingly set up. Uh, you've got Damien Dark still in prison. You've got Malcolm Merlin, you know, talking to Andy at the end of the last episode. Uh, you see Andy going to get a gun at the beginning of this one. And, you know, it becomes this long episode of do we trust Andy, do we not? I went with not. Um, I, I knew this was kind of going to be the route that they chose where Oliver doesn't trust him, but John is like, you know, you can't, you have to trust him, you know, he's given us all this information, he took an arrow for you. It just seemed way too obviously set up for Andy to be a bad guy, that I had never bought it from the beginning. Uh, you know, it just, it seemed way too, like, even him getting shot with an arrow, I was like, that felt very set up, you know, like, they just he and Oliver happen to be the only two that make it through, and then he's the one that just happens to see the arrows just in time to take one for Oliver, and now all of a sudden, oh, you can trust me, I took an arrow for you. It seemed way too obvious. So, <clears throat> the twist where he's actually still working with Damien Dark wasn't really a twist for me. Um, I don't know, maybe it really shocked everybody else, but I don't know. When you When you try to set up something so much one way, it makes it feel really obvious whenever it's the other. You know, like whenever, the other example I could think of is um, in The Flash, Barry and Iris, you know, their little romance, will they, won't they get together thing. The more that they say, oh, they're not gonna end up together, the more I'm convinced that in the end, yeah, they are. You know, if they had, if there was a moment where it was like, oh, look, they're about to get together, then I might be like, oh, well, you know, now anything's possible, but it just felt like first Iris is with this one guy, and then all of a sudden he dies, and then Barry gets with this other girl, and then they're done, and then Iris gets with this one guy. It's like, it just feels like you're constantly throwing wrenches in there, so that in the end, whenever it finally all works out, it's like, oh, it seemed like they might not, but now they are. So, yeah, the fact that this entire episode was... Oh, we can trust Andy. Look, he's doing all this stuff for you. He's, and then he's got an answer for everything. It's like no, no, he's he's working with Dark. So yeah, I, I don't want to say it was predictable, but it kind of was. <laughs> However, once they finally reached that point, it was it was pretty good. You know, like whenever they get into the prison, it was really really awesome to watch. Like, all the fight scenes are pretty cool. Um, Thea fighting Malcolm and Malcolm beating her and saying, you've lost the bloodlust, so you've lost a part of yourself. That was very interesting. Um, and it kind of makes you feel like Malcolm wanted her to keep the bloodlust. And that's... I think I talked about this before, how Malcolm was willing to let Thea die to keep hold of the League of Assassins. And I, I always wondered, you know, you always say you have her best interest in mind. How is that possible? Looking at it now, in his mind, I think he really does justify the fact that he's trained Thea. With the bloodlust, she was willing to kill, and it made her stronger. It made her a stronger fighter. Now without it, now that it's gone, she's actually not as strong. And I think he sees that as a weakness, and that's... In his mind, he was thinking, "I, you know, we can let her keep the bloodlust. It will make her stronger because of it. Uh, because he doesn't see killing as wrong. So, yeah, it was kind of interesting to see that. Uh, the fight between, you know, the the team and all of these inmates. They're taking on, like, four guys at once. Uh, that was pretty, pretty fun to watch. Damien Dark finally gets his idol back. Um... You know, looking for the gym. Andy's got it. He found out where it was. Uh, and then Damien Dark gets his powers back. And then, of course, you have the moment where uh, 
you know, he's talking to Laurel and says, you know, I told your dad what would happen if he betrayed me. I need you to send him a message for me. I'm a man of my word. And then stabs her with an arrow. Now, <clears throat> I, I mentioned this, I think, two reviews ago. I actually saw a preview uh, while I was watching Legends of Tomorrow. I saw a preview for <clears throat> the arrow that week. And the very first line in the preview was Oliver saying, I'm going to avenge Laurel. So at that point, I knew Laurel was the one at the funeral. You know, she, she, was, the, she was the gravestone. She was the one that died. But mm, did she? <laughs> because whenever he stabbed her, I thought, okay, so she's going to go in, surgery, something, and then they're going to say, we did everything we could. We couldn't, we, we couldn't stop it, you know, we couldn't fix it. But then they get her out of surgery, and the doctor says she's going to be fine. And then all of a sudden, she has a private conversation with Oliver that we're not allowed to hear, and then she's dying. Do you see why I'm suspicious right now? And maybe it really is just, she really did die. There were complications or something. Maybe they'll explain that in the next episode and I'll feel kind of stupid for thinking she was still alive. And maybe the private conversation was just something that, you know, Oliver will use against Dark later or something like that. But right now, I'm just like, I still think she's alive. I was having a conversation with a friend of mine who watches the show and I was just like, I, I still think she's alive. I mean, everything they did in those last moments... It's so suspicious. It makes me think they're just setting it up so that she's still alive. Now, there are a couple things that make me hesitate to say that she's still alive. One is Oliver's reaction. Now, obviously, he, you know, we know he can act. We know that, I'm not talking about Stephen Amell, I'm talking about Oliver Queen. We know he can act like one way when it's actually another. Um, we know he can lie like the best of them. However, the fact that he walked out of the room and was still looking heartbroken, you know, don't really know what that means, but nor normally, 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 Whenever you see a character acting one way with nobody else around, like with Thea, you know, Thea, I was like, what if she really isn't under Malcolm's control? What if she really is just plain evil now after, you know, in, at the beginning of season three? But there was a moment whenever she and Malcolm were alone and she was talking about how much she hated him. And I was like, oh, okay, so this is real. Same thing here. You know, the fact that he walks out of the room, everybody's not watching, and he still, you know, looks devastated makes me question is she dead you know at, it could just be thrown in there for us to think she's dead the audience you know oh look oliver's even upset about it so it must be true the other thing that makes me hesitate to say she's dead is that this if the plan is pretend that laurel's dead so damian dark doesn't come after her again you know because we know that Dark is a man of his word, and so he will kill Laurel because of Captain Lance. So, if the plan is to make it look like she died, how are they going to do that in a hospital where nobody really knows Oliver, nobody really knows... Like, is there some sort of plan set in place where somebody's going to come get her? before she wakes up from whatever drug made her look like she died and I don't know I want to know what that conversation was about at the end because I'm sure it's going to be important later I don't know what it is but I'm sure we're going to find out um yeah I don't I don't know so many possibilities of what it could be and ultimately until we find out exactly what happened until we find out whether or not she actually died it's just kind of going to be floating in the air, you know, like, wonder what's going to happen next. So anyway, long story short, it was an interesting episode, maybe a little bit predictable on the Andy side, um, and then an ending that 
raises a lot of questions but doesn't answer much, um, which can be fun. So we'll see how they take it. But those are my thoughts on this episode, so let me know what you think down in the comments below. Um, if there's anything that I missed that you want to discuss, let me know. We can talk about it. Leave a like and subscribe. More of Arrow, and I will see you at the next review. Peace out.